Today I'm going to show you the methods that I've used for over 10 years to understand scales and modes, which have allowed me to learn songs in less than an hour, improvise on the spot, and create full tracks in just a matter of hours. Now I've been teaching these methods privately to my students for over two years, but you guys have been asking for it, so here it finally is. The way I teach it is very modern, logical, in a pattern-oriented way. So if you want to learn scales and actually understand them very fast, keep watching, let's get into it. Now before we get started, I'm going to be doing a lot of these videos on my YouTube channel, but I'm also going to be doing helpful tips on my Instagram. So if you have Instagram and you have a second, follow me at nick.nocturnal on there. Alright, let's get into it. So to start up, I am specifically in drop D. That does not mean you have to be in drop D. You can be in E standard, drop D, drop C, drop whatever you like. If you want to follow along exactly, I recommend tuning to drop D. It's very simple. If you're an E standard, then just take that low E, bring it down to a D. That is it. But I'll show you right at the end how to translate anything from a drop tuning to a standard tuning and from a drop tuning to a different drop tuning. It's very, very simple. Okay? So a scale is essentially a set of, on average, around seven different notes, sometimes less than seven, sometimes more than seven, that you have to play within in order to be considered in a specific key. They're essentially your boundaries within that key. If you play outside of that set of notes, outside of your boundaries, you're then considered out of key. Things will sound wrong, they will sound odd a lot of the time. But if you play within those boundaries, within that key, you can technically play any of those seven notes, and it doesn't really matter necessarily which order, you'll be in key and they'll always sound at least decent. Now modes is a really fancy word for just being able to play that set of notes, those seven notes, everywhere on your fretboard. But it's the exact same notes, just being able to play them everywhere. Now the first scale you're going to learn is called the minor scale. It's extremely important and it's what I base literally all of my music theory knowledge off of. Okay? Now we're going to be learning the minor scale pattern, however, we're specifically going to be playing it in D minor because we are in drop D. Okay? But focus more on the pattern of the minor scale than really caring exactly which key it is. Okay? To start off, we're actually going to be ignoring the low string the low 6th string. We're going to be bringing that in later. We're going to be first going to the D on our 2nd string. That's on the 5th fret. Okay? That's where our pattern is going to start. The pattern looks like this. 5, 7, 8. Next string, 5, 7, 8. Next string, 5. It has 7 notes. Those are the 7 notes. 5, 7, 8. That is the minor scale. That is the minor scale pattern, but specifically the D minor scale pattern because we're starting at a D. Let's say we took that exact pattern, that shape, right? That's the important part, the shape, and we brought it all down just one fret. We're still playing the minor scale, but this is a C sharp, not a D. So now we're playing C sharp minor. So our key is instead C sharp minor. This applies to changing it to any fret. You go down here, third fret, this is a C. Play the minor scale pattern. There, you're playing C minor. B, B minor, etc., etc. So that's the important thing we're trying to learn is just the pattern of the minor scale. Okay, now you know how to translate it everywhere, which is the important part as well. Anyways, let's get back to it. So this is the lower half of the full usually played scale. Right, seven notes. And that's the scale, however, people usually play two octaves of the full scale, and it looks like this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in terms of the notes, and then you go back to one, you go back to a D, and by the way, how to find where your next section, the next octave that starts of your scale, take the note you started on, do an octave chord, so take the note, go two strings up, and then two frets. You'll always find that octave. So now this is your new one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're just usually played together, okay? Anyways, the pattern for this, you start at seven on that third highest string. You go seven, five on the next string, six, eight. Next string, five, six, eight. Exact same notes you played down here. It's just an octave higher, and you usually play them all together. 
Now we're going to actually use even just this one scale to actually already be able to improvise. I'm going to be using this low string as well because it's a D as well, right? So we know it's in D minor, it's in the key. And you're just going to be picking random notes within this pattern and kind of jamming between them and actually creating a riff. Let me show you. I'm picking random notes within my scale, but because they're within my scale, they're within my key, meaning that anything you play technically can't sound wrong as long as you stay within those boundaries. They might not always sound incredible, some note combinations might sound better than others, but it'll never sound wrong. That's really the key to understanding scales, that's why we have to understand them, okay? Now that is the simple minor scale, that's it. You can already technically write a whole song with just that. But now we're going to learn two more scales that are very much linked to the minor scales that I like to call derivative scales. That's because you use the base of the minor scale that we already learned, that pattern, but you just make a couple adjustments. So we have the minor scale and then we have two derivative scales. One is harmonic minor, one is blues. Harmonic minor sounds very dark. It's the minor scale, but a little more classical and a darker vibe. Blues, you've heard a million times before, it sounds southern, sounds like blues. Right? So that's it. Now, let's start with harmonic minor. Harmonic minor is literally the exact same as minor. All you're doing is sharpening, and by sharpening, I mean you're taking a note and moving it instead one fret higher. You're going to be sharpening the seventh note that you'd usually play. Right, so our pattern is 5, 7, 8, 5, 7, 8, 5. So in terms of note in order, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? You're just going to be sharpening the seventh note. So that note is the note you're going to play instead. And together, it's 5, 7, 8, 5, 7, 8, 6 instead of 5, 7, 8, 5, 7, 8, 5. That's harmonic minor. Now let's do the exact same thing to the octave, right? That's regular minor, seven, five, six, eight, five, six, eight. The seventh note you're gonna be playing though, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you're just gonna sharpen it. Boom. Play both together. That's harmonic minor. Really simple, just sharpen the seventh note. Blues now is a little different because technically you're not taking away a seventh note or you're not taking away a note and then sharpening it you're actually going to be adding on completely an additional note. So harmonic minor, you replace a note, sharpen it, specifically the seventh note. Blues, you just straight up add on a note, which makes it in total have eight notes in the scale. What you're adding on for blues is a sharpened four, okay? So in terms of order, you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, and then add on a sharp four, meaning one fret above four and not the fourth fret in terms of the fourth note in your series of one, two, three, four. Then that's gonna be the blues note. One, two, three, four, sharp, four, five, six, seven. Right? So that's that blues note. Now, same thing, do with, with the octave, right? One, two, three, four, add on a sharp four. It's just one fret above the four. Five, six, seven. Right, there you go. That's the blues scale and the harmonic minor scale easily linked just from the minor scale. So now what I recommend is just keep going over your scales, start with the minor scale. Focus on that one first because once you get that one down, it's very easy to translate to the harmonic minor, blues, or absolutely any other scale you will learn in the future. Okay, now you're probably like, Nick, what about that low sixth string? We're gonna learn that right now, but we're gonna learn this just on the sixth string, and we're gonna learn it horizontally. You know, so our scale, we, from now, we learned it vertically. You know, going down, going up. Now, the sixth string, we're only gonna learn the scale going horizontally, okay? Now this, again, is a D, just like this is a D, okay? And the pattern on the low string goes like this. Zero, two, three. Five, seven, eight, then ten. 
Same thing when it comes to harmonic minor and blues now. Well, this is a D, so this is the first note. And in order to find harmonic minor, we got to sharpen the seventh. So in terms of, you know, the note value, this is the first note, second note, third note, fourth note, fifth note, sixth note, and then this is the seventh note we usually hit, but instead replace it and sharpen it. Same thing we play up here. It's just an octave lower, okay? Um, now same thing with blues, add on a sharp four, so one, two, three, four, add on a sharp four, five, six, seven. So now this is the part that if you're in a standard tuning, it's the only thing that you slightly have to watch out for. Everything else is the exact same. But if you're in a standard tuning, instead of the pattern being 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, everything is minus two frets. Everything is two frets lower than it normally would be. So for you, instead it would be 0, 1, 3, 5, 6, 8, and then 10. And because you're in a standard tuning and everything's two frets lower, you wouldn't be in drop D, you'd be probably an E standard, meaning you're starting on an E and not a D. So you're not starting at the first note of the series anymore. The E is actually the second note of the series. You'd actually be going two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one. This would then be where your D is. That's the only difference. Everything else is the exact same. That's how you deal with the low string, and I seriously recommend just learn the low string, learn it horizontally, because it'll help you much more later when it comes to modes, when it comes to chords, chord progressions, all of that stuff, okay? So when you're practicing your scales, top five strings only, do them vertically, then just get to the low string and get used to it horizontally on its own. So that's the scales portion of this video. If you like that portion, Hit that subscribe button down below and share the video because honestly I think even just that in itself will help so many people understand scales. So now we're going to move on to modes. Now again, if you remember what I said at the beginning, modes is just a fancy word for saying playing the exact same notes, it's just we're being able to play them everywhere on our fretboard instead of just this one area, but it's still the exact same notes. Now a really good way to kind of think of modes is think of like a circular clock shape of something, right? And our scale, right, the minor scale, goes first note, second note, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it repeats, right? When you hit one again, it's just the octave of one, the exact same note, an octave higher. Now modes makes it so first position, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but the second mode, we're instead just gonna start at two and then go three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then because we're starting one note later, we're gonna end one note later, so we're gonna end at one. However, you're still going over the exact same series of notes as your scale. The same series of notes, you're just starting at a different point within the series. Just like the third mode, you're gonna start at three, and you're gonna go three, four, five, six, seven, then one, two, okay? Same notes, you're just starting at a different point within the series of notes. That's all modes are, okay? So, based on that knowledge, of course, there are probably seven modes. Just like there's seven notes in our scale, there's gonna be a mode per note to start on within the scale, if that makes sense. So our first mode, and so our second mode is gonna start on the second note of our scale, right? And just be consistent, right? Make sure all your modes start on the second string, just so it's easier to understand, easier to make everything kind of align with each other, okay? So, first mode, second mode, it's gonna start on that second note, and it's gonna start at the seventh fret. Pattern goes like this, seven, eight, 10, seven, eight, 10 again, and then seven. Right, going over the same series of notes of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you're just starting at two, and you're going two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So playing this is the same as going back to your first position and instead starting at the second note. They're the exact same notes. It's just a different position, meaning that the pattern is shaped a little differently, okay? So anyways, that's the minor scale, right? Second position. Now, how do you apply the harmonic minor blues or any other scale you learn? Well, by following that same rule. Harmonic minor, we always sharpen the seventh note within our series. That's the important little trick to remember. So whenever you get to seven, or whenever you count to seven, you're still gonna instead say, okay, replace seven with a sharp seven. But we're now starting counting from what number? 
two, because we're at our second mode. So instead you're gonna be doing two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So this is your second note. You're gonna go two, three, four, five, six, seven is normally here, sharpen it. And then you're gonna end at one. There you go, that's harmonic minor second position, second mode. Do the exact same thing for the blues scale, right? Blues, we're adding on a sharp four, okay? But we're gonna start counting from two. So we're gonna go two, three, four, sharp four, five, six, seven, one, right? Because we start at two, we're gonna end at one. We start one later, we're gonna end one later, okay? Now that's how that works for all of the modes. So when we get to the third mode, you know you're gonna start at three, and then it's always still gonna be the sharpened seven. It's always gonna be the sharpened four, but just make sure you're counting from the right note within your series, and it'll always perfectly align for you, okay? Now back to the second mode. Do the same thing we learned at the first mode. Make an octave chord to find the higher range, the higher octave, right? There you go. You land on nine. Pattern goes like this, nine, 10. Next string, eight, 10. Next string, six, eight, ten. Right, same notes you played down here. It's just an octave higher, okay? So, nine, ten, eight, ten, six, eight, ten. All right, now harmonic minor. Now remember, again, we're starting to count from what? Two, right? Okay, so two and harmonic minor is replace the seven with a sharp seven. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven is normally here. Sharpen it, sharp seven, and then one. Blues add on a sharp four, so two, three, four, add on a sharp four, five, six, seven, one. Okay, you can play it all together. Right, so now let's do one more mode and let's do the third mode. I'm not gonna go over all of the modes because honestly it would make this lesson an hour long. If you want me to make a video like that, feel free to tell me down below, but all the core concepts of modes is really just in the first couple modes, and then the rest is just kind of rinse and repeat, a lot of memory work, okay? So third position on the eighth fret. Makes sense, right? So we're gonna go eight, 10, 12, eight, 10, 12, nine. That's the third position, okay? Now harmonic minor again, take the seven, sharpen it. What note are we starting on in the series? The third note, right? This is the third mode. So we're gonna go three, four, five, six, seven's normally here, sharpen it. One, two. Right, we're gonna end at two because we started at three this time. Remember, it's just a circle of the same series of notes, depending if you're in harmonic minor or blues, or just minor, of course, right? Now blues add on a sharp four, right? So three, four, sharp four, five, six, seven, one, two. There you go. Now octave, same idea, right? Make an octave chord. Find the octave, it starts at 10. Pattern goes 10, and then next string, 8, 10, 11, then 8, 10, 12. There you go, that's minor, right? Now harmonic minor, replace the seven with a sharp seven, same rule. And again, what degree or what position are we starting on? Three, just an octave higher. It doesn't matter that it's an octave higher, it's still a three, okay? So three, four, five, six, seven's normally here, sharpen it, sharp seven, one, two. Blues add on a sharp four, we're starting from three. So three, four, sharp four, five, six, seven, one, two. Okay, and you play it all together. But see, even just from those three modes, you now know your boundaries within all those different scales. Again, I recommend first just learn minor, right? So now, instead of just learning it here, and being able to only improvise in this area, you can now even go up here. Right, and the more modes you learn, the more you get used to, the more free you'll be in terms of being able to play within your boundaries everywhere, okay? Now I'm gonna give you a chart, I'm gonna leave it for you so you can actually understand this stuff because if I, again, if I go over all of these modes, it's gonna be an over hour lesson and there's no, no point because all the concepts you already understand, okay? So there you have it, and just you know, look at the chart, I'm gonna explain it best I can. So here's the chart, now just to quickly go over it, um, the blue dotted notes are anytime you want to use a blues note, and the pink dotted notes are anytime you want to use a harmonic minor note, right? Pink, harmonic minor, take the seven, replace it with a sharp seven. Blues, add on a sharp four. Again, to start off, ignore the blue and the pink notes, just learn the regular notes. Learn the scales vertically and ignore the sixth string for now. 
However, on that chart, you'll still see the six string, that low string, you'll see the tabs on it. It's just in a lighter gray color to remind you that those are where the notes are, but just do them separately. Do the low string horizontally, do the top five strings vertically. Learn that first in minor, then start to expand to each of the different modes. The chart right at the top of it, you know, you see the whole fretboard, you see all the modes together, and then right on the bottom under it, you see all the modes segregated, you know, fifth position, six, seven, then one, two, three, four. Get used to those, and honestly, it'll really help out. Now, all this knowledge translates again to any tuning. I know I'm in drop D, but let's say you were in drop C. The only difference would be that this is not a D, it's a C. So you'd be playing in C minor. If you were in drop B, the only difference would be that this is a B. And you'd be playing B minor. The pattern never goes away, but the notes themselves change. That's why I don't teach in terms of note names necessarily. I teach in terms of patterns because the note names are always changing. Okay. But there you have it guys. I hope that all made enough sense. If you like this video, please, please hit that subscribe button down below and please share it around. You know, I know that this knowledge can really help so many people that are struggling when they go online and they're trying to learn scales, modes, and it's just taught in such a weird, just awkward ambiguous way where nothing logically really links together unless you like know it in a very specific theoretical way which a lot of us don't right a lot of us are just guitarists we're not crazy music theorists um, and a lot of us I'm assuming if you're watching this probably play metal too where music theory is even less prominent right so this is really a method not only if you're a metalhead but if you're just a guitarist searching to understand theory so if you like this again, subscribe and please share it around. Now, if you want me to do more videos like this regarding even showing the rest of the modes, even though you'll have the chart to see them, or if you want to see, you know, how to create chords just based on scales, how to create unique songs, you know, how to use different modes and translate keys, all of that kind of fun stuff, how to improv, whatever it might be, tell me down below in the comments and I might do a video like that. But yeah, I put a lot of work into this one, so I really hope you guys like this video. But um, best of luck. You know, if you have questions, ask down below as well. But use that chart, practice it, and I guarantee you, you'll be able to understand just music in general so much more. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in supporting the channel, then be sure to check out the Patreon. There's a lot of cool perks on there, as well as like weekly tips and whatnot. There's going to be a link on the screen in the description. But um, yeah, I really hope you guys like this video, and I will see you next time.